And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Hello, everyone out there in Tampa Bay and beyond. Uh, this is James Mills coming out to you for the RBLR Sports Podcast on a Thursday night. You will be hearing this probably on a Friday morning, I assume. Carlos, uh, what are we doing here on a Thursday evening recording something for the Rowdies? This isn't what we usually do. James, we're here for a very special edition of the RBLR Rowdies podcast. Some big news just hit the internet. Um, well, not just. It's been about, what, four hours and 18 minutes since it officially got announced. Um, new head coach officially announced for your Tampa Bay Rowdies. Stuart Dobson, the interim head coach, is taking a step back from his interim role. And Nikki Law is coming in and taking over as head coach of your Tampa Bay Rowdies, a name that I want to say, partially to my credit, I mentioned at least jokingly um, last week. I don't even remember if it was on air, James, but I remember you can testify to this. You and Eureka were there when I mentioned it as a a joke on the side. Um, But it's awesome that it's actually coming to fruition. It it just I never thought it actually would, but Nikki Law coming back to the Tampa Bay Rowdies after a half season here as a player last year, and taking over the reins as head coach. Um, Officially, according to the wording on uh, the release, um, until the end of the season, who knows what happens after that. But for now, we have our head coach, James. What's going on? What's going through your head? Um, Let's get some general reactions. Let's just talk about this, right? All right. Well, my first reaction based on that is, Carlos, if you could jokingly say that we're going to win the whole thing this year and win (laughs) the championship, (laughs) um, that would be my first step. But uh, in, a, in a more serious note, um, you know, we have a little bit of background to go into for anyone listening, because um, I think that Nikki Law is going to be familiar to Rowdy's fans, but not super familiar. Um, you know, like I got a text today saying, who's this Nikki guy from someone? So <laughs> yeah. just to put that out there, like not everyone does remember Nikki Law super well. He was here for uh, six months ish. Am I am I right on that? Less but, than that. Um, yeah. So yeah, Nikki Law. Um, he came to the United States uh, to join Indy Eleven originally in 2011 and 2022 after a career kind of bouncing around the lower divisions in England and Scotland. Uh, he moved to Rangers in Scotland, which, uh, if anyone knows, Scottish soccer is actually one of the better teams, but they dealt with some financial issues. So he was with uh, Rangers when they were down in the lower divisions. And we're going to cut off that conversation there before my uh, dad comes in and tra- travels through time and space to uh, break down this door to my right and and start yelling at me about how uh, everyone is, you know, against Rangers in, in their, uh, in their efforts to try and do anything. But um, yeah, he was there and then he moved, like I said, to Indy 11 in 2021 he spent two well a season and a half there i guess because it mm-hmm. was at the end of 2022 that he came to the tampa bay rowdies and uh it seemed at the time like it was a little bit of a weird move um i remember that you know you and i were uh, uh, a little a little taken aback by that uh mm-hmm. it was exactly on the 21st of july last year uh he was sent over to or he came to the Tampa Bay Rowdies and we sent away Juan Tejada uh, to mm-hmm. Indy 11. So, yeah, that was um, that was the time that he joined us, obviously played with us throughout the rest of the season and the playoffs last year. And then um, I believe that towards the end of this year, I just expected him to be around because it seemed like such a weird move for us to make for him. You know, mm-hmm. um, I didn't think that Juan Tejada was necessarily our most prized asset as much as we all did love him. But um, it was it was just kind of weird that we would send him away in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this guy must have something going on here. And, um, you know, it did seem to be fair, like Neil Collins kind of had him on a bit of an inside track for maybe a coaching career afterwards. I believe that was even part of the uh, press release that, you know, Nikki Law came over to the United States originally with the intent of pursuing some coaching down the line. And um, so. Uh, just to recap what happened after that, uh, when the Rowdies unfortunately lost in the playoffs, you know, we went into the off season there and they had to sort it out. Nikki law actually left in, uh, that off season. And I was kind of, uh, taken aback by that too. Like I said, it was weird that we had him join just for him to ultimately go in the off season, but what a good season. Uh, 
Yeah, he did. And then um, it kind of became clear why, because uh, he joined MLS Next Pro side Huntsville City as a player coach. So, um, you know, as you get kind of older in years in the professional game, a lot of people will take on these roles, especially in lower division teams, as a player coach. So obviously mm-hmm. you are mostly doing coaching in the in the week and all that kind of stuff. And then every so often you might get some games. And uh, yeah, he took over as in that role for Huntsville City. And he was there, I believe, pretty much up until I probably what, like two weeks ago or something. Um, I actually have his stats here. The last game he played. Okay, the last game he played was July 9th. So actually not that not that even, you know, long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, in all honesty, if I look at this, I'm kind of thinking that like my first reaction, my first reaction, like when I kind of process all that information and I think back about how it worked out and all this stuff, I kind of think that this was Neil Collins' parting gift to the Rowdies. I think that he was kind of like, hey, guys, I know this guy <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think that he would be good. And, you know, we don't know the back, the behind the scenes stuff and the back and forth between Neil Collins and Nikki Law. We don't know exactly their relationship otherwise. And um, it, it was just it was just very interesting that mm-hmm. all of this stuff when he did sign for the Rowdies came about. And I, I think that Neil Collins is just super high on this guy, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure where the relationship starts, but um, yeah. that's that's my first reaction is that's what this seems like to me. Um, they they must know each other pretty well. And uh, yeah. W- what do you think, Carlos? I mean, we can get more into the stuff with Huntsville City. I think that that would be beneficial here, but, um, yeah. you know, not super beneficial either, because as a player coach, you're not impacting it a, a ton, you know? Yeah, no, we can't like I was I was thinking about like what we can know about his tactical game. Um, and in my head, when I heard that the news uh, was coming out soon, um, I was thinking, you know, we're going to come out with an emergency podcast, right? Um, how are we going to structure this? We're going to talk about our general reactions. We're going to talk about, you know, this coach's former um, teams and like the tactics he brought, the formations he likes to play with. Um, and this case is one of the situations where you can't really do that. Like we don't, we can assume, I think that he's going to kind of stick with the Neil Collins system. You kind of mentioned it in the video that they released to the, um, to the Twitter verse um, and, and on all the social medias. Um, he mentioned that uh, basically he doesn't have to change much, um, which is kind of like the attitude that we kept, um, you know, mentioning we would see with uh, Stuart Dobson. Um, but here we have a guy that's, you know, that seems like he really wants to pursue a head coaching career. Um, and it looks like he's just going to kind of stick with the same system based on, you know, I'm, I'm kind of inferencing and in, uh, coming to that conclusion based on what I'm reading from the press release and and what he said in um, the video that they put out of him after his first uh, training with the team on the at the waters complex um, it seems like like tactically he's going to be very similar to Neil Collins at least like with this team right um, and that makes sense like you said consistency is a huge huge thing especially when you're changing coaches halfway through the season yeah um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that uh, it, it felt like just sticking with Stuart Dobson might make the most sense because we're halfway through the season and we don't have a lot of games left. Um, That being said, um, if if Stuart Dobson isn't necessarily like wanting to be a head coach anyway, and he's been kind of in this assistant coach for a long time and you're, you're actively looking for a head coach anyway, it seems like this is the best course of action to make that change as soon as possible. Right. I mean, might as well kind of just go for it now um, while there's still a half season left to play. Um, so it, I, I'm I'm my first reaction when I saw Nikki Law was like whoa like okay um, I wasn't necessarily like super excited or super like you know like angry or anything I wasn't like I wasn't really feeling particularly strong about you know the announcement just because it feels pretty like like a safe safe signing you know what I mean um, it seems like he's gonna bring that consistency that you said um, but the more I think about it the more I start comparing it in my head to the Neil Collins. Um, Neil Collins is taking over back in 2018. I think this is a, a very important way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. The, like that's kind of how I've started to think about it as I've processed it for the last four or five hours. Um, it's not like, again, consistency is there, but he seems like, again, a guy that's really set on taking this head coaching career, like all the way. Um, he obviously wants to win a championship, um, but like you can see the similarities to Neil Collins. You can see kind of like where they've come from. Um, again, 
uh, played for uh, at least one of the same clubs coming up. They both played for Sheffield United for a bit um, around the same age. Uh, like you said, I'm sure they're connected somehow in that way, going back um, um, to England and whatnot. Um, so I don't know, like I, I've, I've gotten more excited the more I think about the more I thought about it. Obviously, like we have some success bringing in, um, you know, a former player and making him the head coach of the team. Uh, again, it's his first team that he's going to be the head coach of. And you might think that and be like, oh, my God, like, is he really going to be the guy that takes us to a championship? Um, it's a fair question. Like, it's his first season as a head coach. But I, I, I have confidence, right? Like, I trust the Rowdies front office because um, it seems like they've known what they're doing for most of, you know, my time as a Rowdies fan. Um, I'm not in that position because I'm not the expert. So I think I, I think we have reason enough to trust them in their decision. And if they trust Nikki Law to be the guy for the rest of the season, then I don't see why we shouldn't. Um, again, Neil Collins trusted him enough as a player to come in here last season and, and bring some energy and some leadership as an older player, like you said. Um, and he played a good season last season. Obviously, like um, he brought some extra leadership as kind of a veteran of the game. Um, and now he's taking up that leadership role like exclusively as a head coach. And I think that's pretty cool. So if, if we can take anything away from Neil Collins coming in, making this his first, you know, head coaching uh, experience, um, and we see kind of the similarities in, in Nikki Law's background, um, I think we have a lot to be excited about in that way. That being said, the expectations for Nikki Law coming into this season, right, halfway through the season versus the expectations that Neil Collins had back in 2018 when the team was atrocious and we just lost to the Jacksonville Armada in the fourth division in the U.S. Open Cup, right? The expectations are a lot different. Um, I think at this point, like, Nikki Law has a bit more, like, quote-unquote pressure um, to find success and, and kind of, you know, very much compete for a championship um, given the roster we have. Um, I think Neil Collins had a lot more wheel, wiggle room in that 2018 season um, to kind yeah. of like have that season to figure it out um, right. and then regroup for the 2019 season. We saw the success he had after that. Um, my question for you, James, is kind of just personally, I'm, I'm wondering how you think about it. And I'm wondering how the rest of the Rowdy's family feels about it. How much wiggle room would you give Nikki Law? Right. Like at, at what point do you think it's like, you know, if he picks up a couple bad losses, I'm like, Oh my God, is he really the guy? Um, I think because, because again, there's not much it's we're halfway through the season. Um, officially he's the head coach through the end of the season, quote unquote, whatever that means, according to the press release. Um, what are your expectations for, for Nikki law? Like a, as a coach, we don't know much about him, but what do you think he can bring to the team? Um, do you think we'll find success? This is, yeah. I mean, it's our own little little community's version of the million dollar question, I guess. But like, yeah, Nikki Law is coming in when you and I started this year. If we go back to the preseason and we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, Neil Collins has this and that and the roster he's building, everything that we did. And even recently, um, this was supposed to be the team. You know, we have been there or thereabouts in the USL championship for four of Neil Collins five years in charge because the first year it was a half a season, as you've already pointed out. So um, those four full seasons that he's had, um, well, okay, three full seasons and then this half season, obviously. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, all, all of those have been very successful um, for us. And Unfortunately, though, we did not go and get the final piece of silverware. You know, we we wanted that USL championship trophy. Um, the US Open Cup is something that comes around at, in terms of winning a trophy maybe once in a, in a decade or so because of the limitations for um, USL sides. The trophy that is on the line for us is the USL championship. And we have just mm -hmm. been so close but not been able to be there. And so we were like, well this is the roster that they're building this year. They want to go and do it. They are not going and getting, you know, a bunch of younger players to replace guys who are a little bit on the older side. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get experienced players who are kind of in the, in the middle of their career. I mean, I guess that's probably what you do at this level anyway, because it's not like you're trying to, I don't know. You can't really start uh, a young, a bunch of young players and then just keep them for five or 10 years in the USL championship. They'll probably just move on to a higher level if that's the way that it goes. But outside of this hypothetical, um, 
regardless of all that, they were trying to build a team that was going to be good enough to go and actually get that trophy. That was mm-hmm. what we were looking at. And that's what you and I were saying. Um, I think that we still have the roster. I think that putting it together has been a bit of a problem more so than you or I would have expected at times. And adding to it with uh, low knees has been good. Ryan Spaulding came in and just absolutely killed it. And then Jake LaCava has come in and I think he's still certain, certain himself out, getting his feet under him. Mm-hmm. But the point is we have the good, so to speak, to try and go and win this. Um, Neil Collins leaving in the middle of the season obviously does give us a bit of a disadvantage. So mm-hmm. I don't, but then I can't turn around and look at Nikki law and say, this is your first head coaching job. You need to go and do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, like every fan should be asking for that because this is, this was supposed to be the year. This was supposed to be the roster. These mm-hmm. were supposed to be the players to go and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that just things changing it up. I don't know. I think Nikki law probably has a lot of potential as a coach, mm-hmm. but how much of that has even been, you know, started at this point, I'm sure he's doing his coaching badges courses. Mm-hmm. How much, how much changing of a game can you be as a player coach? Just, um, to go over Huntsville city really fast. I want to hit on that real fast. Um, they've played 18 games this year. Their record is six, one, four, four drawn and eight lost. And that mm-hmm. puts them in eighth position in the Eastern conference. They do split it up East and West. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played in, I think 11 of these games, um, you know, quite a few starts and, and uh, a couple substitute appearances. Um, not that it really matters for our purposes, but no goals and two assists. Just wanted to toss that out there again. That's literally the least important thing right now. How do we go from you're a player coach at an MLS next pro side and say, okay, go win this for us. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't think that he's necessarily a holdover coach. I think that the, like the press release says that he is the coach until the end of the le- until the mm-hmm. end of the season. Mm-hmm. We don't know if there's like, you know, one of those uh, clauses where they can extend it based on how well he does or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm just not at the point personally where I'm like, Nikki law is the guy that they've appointed to go and win us the league. That's what mm-hmm. I'm, that's kind of where I am. Um, I guess that was a really long way to get to that, to that point, <laughs> but no, I mean, that's, I, I, I don't know how we're supposed to kind of put that on him yet. Yeah. I think that's kind of the correct sentiment, right? I don't think anybody should automatically just be like, Oh, Nikki law had coach like championship champion, like guaranteed. Right. Like, I mean, that doesn't make sense logically. Um, and that's not to say, like, you know, like, I think he's he's going to be a great coach, and I think it's a great appointment. Um, I just, like, like you said, it's it's a logical, like, conclusion to just be, like, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure, not necessarily about him as a coach, but just about how the season's going to go. Just not, um, yeah, it's it's not even necessarily got to do with him. We don't know. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it, re- it, it really has nothing to do with him. It's the fact that Nikki Law is a like his, his first coaching experience, right? Um, again, he's an assistant, or sorry, a, a player coach at, at um, Huntsville, um, coming in, taking over a really, really good team. Um, but we don't know anything about his his play style, his tactics, his kind of like uh, personality wise. He seems like a leader, right? He has like the the um, the experience for it. He's a veteran of the game at this point. Um, and by the way, his dad was a head coach as mm-hmm. well. His dad was a player and a head coach. He, he had stops at Chesterfield, Bradford City, Grimsby Town. Um, some pretty, pretty, pretty big name teams um, in England, right? Um, so I, I, I'm sure he has some of that aura as well already. He's been around his dad, who's been a head coach for a while, or who was a head coach for a while. Um, so he, I think he has all the necessary ingredients to kind of have the personality, the charisma to be a really engaging um, uh, leader in the locker room. So I'm yeah. not really worried about that. I'm not really worried about like, you know, him changing up the scheme or anything too much. Like I I'm genuinely think it's a good appointment. Um, it's just a matter of, of, you know, we don't really know how it's going to go. And like, that's fine. I think that's fine. 
I think that it would be the same thing whether we brought in Nicky Law or whether we brought in Pep Guardiola, honestly. Like, it's it, 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 everybody, no matter who takes over, you're taking over halfway through a season with a team that you're not, you know, you haven't played a half season with. Um, and I think, honestly, Nicky Law has that over Pep Guardiola that he has, he's been with the team at least last year for a good chunk of the season. He knows the culture, he knows kind of how things operate. Um, he knows a lot of the players because there was a lot of continuity from last year. Um, so I think he's in a great position to find success, honestly. So I know we're kind of at that point where it's like we just don't know how the season's going to go, but I'm optimistic, right? I'm not really like thinking that we're going to fall off at all. Um, I think we're in, in a great position to kind of uh, launch a successful head coaching career for Nikki Law. I think he has all the tools he need and it really like there couldn't be a better place for him to start his head coaching career in terms of roster, in terms of support, um, in terms of kind of being in the situation he knows pretty well based on his, uh, his, his time with us last year. Um, And that's all to say, I'm pretty excited. Like he has, I have all the faith in the world in him to do a good job. Um, I'm not guaranteeing a championship or anything. Um, I really would like one uh, sometime soon. Um, But you kind of alluded to the point that I'm inclined to agree with that. I know on the press release, it says, quote, unquote, like, you know, he's coach until the end of the 2023 championship season. Um, But it wouldn't make sense for him to be like a temporary head coach for half a season, you know, first head coaching career or first head coaching experience. And then just like dip unless he's just like, I don't know, unless we have like insane fall off and drop down below like Hartford or something. Um he seems like he could be a really good head coach, and he I think he will be a good head coach. Um, so I feel like this is a guy that ends up sticking with us for a few years. Um, that's just, I mean, that's a prediction off of what we know, which is not that much. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a way for him to stay, stick around for a little bit, and I think he will. Um, yeah. In conclusion, I'm excited. Like, I, we, don't, we don't know a, a ton about, like, what his play style is, but again, I think he's just going to stick with what we have already because there's no reason to fix what has been working for most of the year at this point. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I think he's going to be a great leader in the locker room. I'm going to give us uh, one last thing before we go, uh, because right now we don't have a ton to go off of the, uh, I guess more internet famous idea of the uh, new coach bounce as it is. Um, Possibly that's what we could benefit from here. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go back to when the Rowdies were in the USL championship final, uh, there was on the other side of things, Orange County, Orange County was actually having a pretty bad season. Um, Mm -hmm. The Rowdies are having a pretty good season overall. It started off poorly and then, you know, we picked it up, but Mm -hmm. to use their example, they had a pretty bad season and they actually changed halfway through the year to, Mm -hmm. I believe it was Richard Chaplow who was in charge at the time. Richard Chaplow took over and they just kind of caught fire at the right time. Ultimately, they weren't even that good of a team because the next year it just dropped off. And even under Richard Chaplow, it just dropped off. But they caught fire at the right time. And they went and they went all the way through the playoffs. And somehow they beat the best team with the best, uh, you know, league season in years with the best uh, points total, all of the things that the Rowdies had going for us. They beat us in that final. So. Is it a possibility? It's it's at least out there. Yeah, uh, I think it's a really good possibility, honestly. Like, I mean, again, we have I think the best roster in the league. We have the support. I mean, we have we have fans who are going to get behind this coach. Um, I think make him feel very welcome. Um, I guess welcome welcomed back. I guess since he was here already, but um, you get what he's I'm pogged back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a good time to see like what he can do or i guess what he's what his vision is for the team on saturday um we'll get a taste of what that's going to be i I hope i get a chance to kind of get to one of the practices on at the waters complex kind of see what his intensity is like um again i just i get so many like similar vibes between him and neil collins right um you know similar experiences in in taking over the team um kind of like the background their, their their soccer background um their intensity. You've seen uh, Nikki Law on the pitch last year, and he was, you know, a fierce competitor, very energetic. Um, I'm sure there'll be a little bit less screaming on the sidelines <laughs> now. Well, we don't know. Of, we don't know yet. 
Yeah, I, I, you're right. But that's part of it. We, we're, you're right. I just, in my head, I feel like there's nothing that can match the Neil Collins, like <laughs> heavy Scottish accent yelling from the sideline. Um, so I guess a little bit less Scottish accents <laughs> in Nicky Law from the sideline. But again, high energy guy, um, very down to earth. Um, I think he's somebody who can connect with the fans very well. And if, you know, one thing we harps on about Neil Collins is that he's a guy that always put the fans first um, in terms of just kind of like remembering the why, right? Like, why are you playing? Exactly. Right. Um, I think Nikki law is kind of one of those guys that has a personality to be a great leader and a personality to be the head coach of a team like the Rowdies um, in the USL um, that, you know, is, is a very community based club, right? Uh, a, a club that, very much is connected with his fans. He's the guy for it, honestly. So I know there's a lot of interest in the head coaching position and, and there's a variety of calls based on what we know to the, to the front office people. There's a lot of people interested in this position. Um, I think this was the right choice based. I mean, I don't know. I guess we don't really know who the the rest were. Um, that would be if, one thing I'd love to hear. Yeah. Right. Um, but based on what we know, which is not much, it seems like a great choice. And he seems like a guy that will have a very successful coaching career. Um, and I, I just hope we're the place that kind of kickstarts that. Exactly. So, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I really am. I, I'm not going to guarantee a championship, but like you said, I think it's still very much um, in the realm of possibility. Um, if we find our game again and kind of get back on track, like we had um, in that crazy unbeaten streak, I don't see why not, honestly. Yep. Um, well, that is probably where we should leave it, Carlos. Um, I don't have much oh, whoa, whoa. else here. One oh, more piece of news. One, one more piece, piece of news. news. Sorry, m- more miscellaneous piece of news, kind of not related to the, um, you know, I, we're here to talk about Nikki Law taking over as head coach, but this came out on Twitter earlier today, and I felt like it was worth mentioning. I haven't seen anything from the Rowdy's Twitter account yet. Um, no official announcement about it. Um, but we did see a um, tweet from a, a journalist named Manuel Veth. I guess like pretty big. He's got 30,000 followers. He's, a, uh, he's the guy who actually, I, I believe he founded the website transfer market. So he's pretty big. Oh on yeah, he is. Things. Oh yeah. He's that guy. Yeah. So the guy that founded transfer market, the website. Um. Oh my God. I didn't realize that. Is, did he find, found it? Or? I believe anyway, he did. Whatever. Manuel, that big guy, he works for transfer market or founded it. I don't really know. Um. Point being, he uh put out earlier today around midday, um, that Inter Miami quote are set to loan Abel Caputo to USL Championship side Tampa Bay Rowdies. Caputo has been playing for Inter Miami too in the MLS Next Pro, where he's had 17 appearances this season. He also said Italian clubs have looked at the player, so a player that I guess has spiked some interest in Italy. Um, he's a kid from Venezuela, Caracas, uh, 23 years old, young guy, um, defensive midfielder, kind of like the Jordan Doherty um, area is where he plays. Um, I don't know. If it's if if that ends up being true, uh, depth piece I think in the middle, um, especially with Lewis Hilton still out, I think he's going to be a, a solid addition in there. But honestly, don't know much about him. We just know he's a defensive midfielder. Um, youth career started in Levante in Spain, uh, passed through a couple teams, played for a team in Belgium for a bit. Um, also, was a veteran of the Florida Soccer Soldiers in 2020, a team from the UPSL, um, and after that. Uh, moved to Inter Miami 2021 has kind of been on the two team um, since then, but he also has 24 appearances um, in 2022 and 15 appearances in 2023 with the senior team in Inter Miami. So a guy that has a lot of experience with the the main squad in Inter Miami um, been playing with the two team for a little bit. Um, and a guy that, I don't know if the little I know about him seems like he can be a good piece to add into the midfield, but um, not much else to say about him. Other than it's cool that he's from Venezuela because we haven't had a lot of Venezuelan players in our history. Um, yeah, I don't think the so. exception of Juan Guerra. Yeah, Juan Guerra is the one I can think of last. Um, he's now head coach in you know, Phoenix. Maybe this guy becomes our head coach in 20 years. Who knows? Um, <laughs> that being said, we have our head coach, James. Nikki Law is the guy. Um, and, and like you said, I feel like this whole thing might have been orchestrated from last season with, with Neil Collins. Like, you know, it, it, they knew each other somehow. Neil Collins brought in this veteran guy in a kind of weird exchange. Um, and it was all set to happen at some point. Neil Collins would be getting looks from England um, for a little bit, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, he had, he had Walsall was apparently pretty close to bringing him over to England in, in the USL League Two um, earlier this year. There was a bit of um, 
you know, some reports of that. Um, and then eventually Barnsley came up and he went over to Barnsley. Um, so it was going to happen eventually. I think we all knew that. Um, I think Neil Collins might have known that, obviously. Uh, so it would have made sense that N- N- Nicky Law was going to be the guy that he brought over and kind of maybe, I don't know, molded to be his replacement in the near future. And here we are, 2023, one season later. And, you know, if it truly was his vision, then hopefully it comes to fruition in the best way possible. I think that's a good note to leave it on. Carlos, uh, we are going to head out here. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. I think that uh, it's good for us to try and, you know, just get a, a little little first feeling on this one because that's pretty much all we have at the moment. But exactly. as always, we ask that you uh, like and subscribe to the podcast and follow us on all social media. Um, you can get at us on YouTube as well so that you can see us. I am back in my usual place, so I'm not sitting in the dark like I was earlier this week. But um, all right, we're going to head out and leave it there. Good luck to Nikki Law. Good luck to the boys. And of course, come on, you rowdies. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.